Let's get into the word today. I believe the Lord has a special message for our church. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. This is a very familiar verse of scripture. You hear this quite often. I preach from a time or two in my ministry. But I feel like this is where the Lord has led me. It's a key word in this verse of scripture that I want to pull my subject from today. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. When you find it, we ask you to stand if you can for the custom of God's word. Ecclesiastes, I hear pages turning. It's off in the middle of the book. All that turning just for one scripture. But it's well worth it. Amen. God's word is well worth it. Amen. To everything there is a season. Somebody shout season. season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. Pray with me today. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the spirit I feel here today. God, I just feel a good spirit, a good spirit of liberty. And that's what we ask for. You said if we ask, we shall receive it, God. So right now, I pray for the anointing, Lord, of the Holy Ghost to abide upon me, that I may have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say unto this body of believers. And most of all, God, that my heart may be filled with love. And from the abundance of my heart, my mouth would speak, Lord, Feed your sheep today through me. Let me yield as a vessel of honor, God, that I may that I may just get out of the way and let you have your way, Father. That's what I'm praying today, that these altars, God, will be filled up with hungry souls, thirsty souls. If they don't know you, my prayers is today, they don't leave here without knowing you. Lord, and I pray, God, that most of all, that we would surrender all. Don't leave this church today with something on our conscience or something on our heart. John chapter 14 tells us, let not our hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. So right now, we're asking for your anointing in this sanctuary. We'll give you praise for in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Before you sit down, give God a praise for his word. Amen. amen. We got a few of our people out today, sir. You're going to have to you're gonna have to fill in their spot and clap for them and shout for them. Amen. How many love Jesus today? Come on. I mean, he's been good to us. Church, we've suffered together. We've reigned together. We've laughed together. We've weeped together. That's what church family is all about. Amen. Some has come, some has gone, and some's come back again. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ is the foundation of what we believe in. He's the reason that we meet you. And I feel like today I got a message. I've been seeking the Lord, been praying and asking God, help our services, help souls to get hungry for God. Man, you don't know what type of discouragement it is upon a pastor when he preaches and the altars are empty. It was so encouraging last Sunday morning to see the altars filled up with new people crying out. Amen. Crying out to God. And, and, and I don't know if they'll come back or not. And one thing about it, we must do what we can and trust God to do what we can. I want to preach a message today entitled Seasons. I, I don't know. I, I felt led to go somewhere or another else. And about the middle of the week, the Lord just dropped this word into my heart. And I began to listen and meditate and pray. And this word Seasons just come to my mind. And the first thing that I want to talk about today is the change of the weather. I mean, when the season changes, weather changes. Can I get an amen right there? When the, when the weather begins to change, Job chapter 37 verse 9 kind of sounds like Alabama. It says, out of the south cometh the whirlwind, cold out of the north. I heard a woman that visited Alabama one day tell a guy that I knew one time, says, oh, Alabama's the only place that I've ever seen that, that you can wake up in the morning and, and go with a short sleeve shirt and before the night's over, you're in a jacket. And, and the longer you live in the south, you can tell that the weather changes. And I believe the Spirit of the Lord wants me to tie in the physical weather today to the spiritual seasons that we go through. Amen. You'll find out the longer that you live for Jesus Christ, some days you're up, some days you're down. Some days you're on fire, some days you're cold. And there's a lot of times that we walk in our salvation and we're cold and indifferent. But I come to tell you today to get prepared that weather in your spiritual life, it will change. You might be up today, but you better embrace yourself because the devil's going to and fro upon the face of the earth seeking whom he may devour. He came to steal. He came to kill. He came to destroy. But Jesus Christ said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. Lift up your head unto the hills for which come at your help. Seasons will change. Weather will change. You know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I just love it when it gets hot. 
I guarantee you those that say that don't work on the outside. They got an office job. They're a school teacher. They get out two months a year. Oh, I mean, everything is hot. I go swimming. Folks who work on the outside hate hot weather. Amen. Amen. They have to work in that stuff. They love it when they can rip the sixth gear that we never found on our air conditioner button. Come on, someone. Some of these new modern vehicles may have a sixth gear. I don't know, but let me know if you got one. I want one. Hot weather to me, I don't like it personally. I really don't. I don't like hot weather. I love it when it's cold because I can always put on enough of clothes to get warm, but you can't take enough of them off to get cool. But don't you turn red faced it on me. Because a lot of people sure attempt it, don't they? Oh, he just had to go there, didn't he? They still hot. Take clothes off and go home looking like a lobster. Amen. Times change and how many of us has our preferences for seasons? Be, be honest today. I mean, every one of us is, hey, well, I say every one of us. Some of us is, has our preferences for seasons. But I'm going to tell you something. We're living in a generation that are never happy with any season. Amen. You talk to some people. Oh, there's too much pollen falling. Got my sinuses all clogged up. I hate to see the springtime come. And then it gets summer like two weeks later. Come on, y'all folks that live in Alabama. It gets summer. It don't stay spring very long. Oh, no, we didn't even have a spring this year. It's so hot. Mosquitoes is out. All these bugs is biting me. And then when it begins to get fall, all that old ragweed begins to fall. Oh, my signs is stopped up again. I hate to see fall come around. And then when it gets winter, oh, I just hate it when it gets cold because my bones hurt. I got arthritis and I can't help it. I tell you what. You just ain't never happy with no types of seasons, are you? Then we wonder why God leaves it hot most of the time. We don't even have a winter no more. Skeeters don't even get killed. Amen. Bugs, rats, and roaches, and ants don't even get cold enough to put them in the ground. Well, I don't know what's wrong with this atmosphere. Uh, uh, they call it the El, what do they call that stuff? El Nino or something like that keeps the ocean stirred up and keeps it hot all the time. And maybe it's God saying, hey, if you don't like none of my seasons, I'll pick me one and I'll just let you have it all year long. Great. But now going back to the spiritual seasons, wouldn't it be lovely if we could choose our own spiritual season. Oh, we love it when it's springtime in our spiritual season, when there's new growth to the church. Can somebody say amen? We love it when we see people come in and surrender all they have to Jesus Christ. And we love it when it's summertime and all the leaves are green and everything's flourishing and everything's alive, but we don't like it when it comes fall time. If you'll notice in the scripture that I read this morning, the Bible said to everything, somebody say everything, everything. to everything there's a season. Not just the leaves and not just the earth and not just the uh, fall and wind, but everything has its own season. And there's a lot of people that start this journey and they, they start with Christ, but in the middle of their walk with Jesus Christ, they go from spring to summer and all of a sudden it begins to get fall and, and the leaves begin to decay and then it gets cold and they get indifferent and they can't feel the presence of the Lord like they used to. I wish I had somebody help me preach. And then they began to wonder, what have I done? Sometimes you may have done something to cause the Spirit of the Lord not to deal with you. The Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. He was a king, and, and in his younger days, he blew his harmonica, and God anointed his music where it drew, drove evil spirits away from Saul. The Bible said that whenever David was called, he was herding sheep and he was a shepherd and he would play his music and lead sheep. You see, God saw David when nobody else saw David. David was a king in God's eyes before he was a king in man's eyes because he that's faithful over a few things, God said, I can make him ruler over many. He began to learn to worship God when nobody was around. Some people got to have a house before 
before they can get excited. But David said, you give me a harp and you give me the presence of the Lord and we can have church. I don't have to have no one to praise God. Don't nobody have to teach me. He's been too good to me. And David plays his harp. And David begins to get called. And David's anointed. And David slews the giant. And as the victories began to collect up in David's life, the women began to notice David. And the Bible said that they would peek out the window when David would come in because he would take off his king's robe and he would dance before the Lord. I want to ask you, sir, I want to ask you, man, when was the last time you had enough of victory to dance before Jesus? Some of you can't even move in church. Some of you never lift your hand and say, praise God. I just wonder if you got anything to praise him. Oh, because when you got the victory, things begin to happen. Amen. I might not say a whole lot when I leave here, but while I'm here, I'm going to go on and give God the praise. I'm going to go on and give him the glory because he gave me the victory. I didn't give it to myself. Let's he that's in me. Let he that's And so, and so he's called. He, he slews the giant and the lady began to notice David as he's dancing before the Lord and he's taking off his royal apparel and they're watching David and they're watching his moves and they're jealous of David. They're falling in love with jealousy with David's worship. Can I tell you when you really worship God, you'll cause others to worship God. Amen. I said when you get in true worship and it ain't all about the crap. I heard a story one time of two people began to speak in tongues in the church and the pastor got frustrated with it and the Lord dealt with him he told them both to shut up all the church's mouth dropped open one shut up one kept speaking in tongues they all asked the pastor said why did you be so rude he said I wanted to show the church who had the goods and who didn't because when God's dealing with your heart man can't stop what God's doing you might tell me to shut up but if you know where I've come from and who brought me there I'm going to say it a little louder God is good all the time and all the time and it's all glory David's living in the spring of his season. He's dancing before the Lord. The ladies are after him. They say Saul slew his thousands. Oh, but David's come along now. And David's slew in 10,000. David's got this anointing upon his life. To where he goes, God follows him. He can whoop folks four times his size because of God that's inside of him. Oh, but all of a sudden he comes complacent in his season. When the boys go out to work, he stays at home. He ain't got to work no more. I done work my years, boy. You get out there and work. I can stay at home. But an idle mind is a devil. Amen. Or oh, you give the devil just a few minutes of your time to toy with your mind and to tempt your soul. I don't care how long you've been living for the Lord. You ain't made it yet. Hey man, I don't care how many victories you already have. Them's in the past. You fight today. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. You can't give up right at the finish line. Just because you see the finish line in sight, you better keep pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high call of God. This thing ain't over with yet. Go! The Bible says to strive ye to enter into the straight gate. For many shall seek and shall not be able to make it. David said, boys, y'all go on and y'all go on to the battle. I'm going to stay at home on this one. Now, after all, it's just a little bitty old town. Ain't nothing to it. Uh, you know, y'all can handle it. I've done taught y'all. I've done shown y'all. Now I'm going to delegate. And while he's delegating, he could least. There's nothing wrong with delegate. There's nothing wrong with teaching the younger folks to learn how to do it on their own. But the least he could be doing was praying for the people that are on the battle line. Oh, but besides praying, his eyes begin to wander. Come on. And he sees this beautiful woman. He got all the women that he wanted. But why is it for why is it such men like the grass on the other side? Pray. Pray. Why, why, why do the men want to go somewhere else when they got a wife at home? Oh, he got quiet then. I must took three nerves. Pray. It ain't only the men and the women folk do the same thing got a husband at home, and nowadays they won't leave him for a man. They'll leave him for another woman. Amen. I ain't never 
I've seen so much pollution in my life. If Alabama don't remind me of Son of Gamar, I ain't preaching. Come on. And they want the preachers to marry this corruption. Come on. Hello, YouTube. Hey, man, I love it when I'm preaching on YouTube. I can tell all the world about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. don't know nothing about it. What was abomination back then? Still abomination today. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Come on, somebody. Come on. And where are you men at? Gonna stand up for what you believe. Come on, bro. David's not praying for his crew. He's looking at another woman. We can't help what we see. We can't help what thoughts come to our mind. But we can help what we stare at and we can help what we think about. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen? Jesus says it like this. You've heard of old times. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman with lust in his heart, not in his brain, come on, in his heart. You see, not in your eyes, because lust can come to your eyes. But you got to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Come on, somebody. You can't help what you see. I tell you what, you can help what you meditate upon. You can help what you think upon. Amen. But David didn't help it because he's high and mighty. He's already got the victory. Just because you had the victory during the spring don't mean you'll have it in the summer. You better hold on to your victory season after season after season after season. David said, get me that woman. I've got to have that woman. You know where that woman's husband's at? That woman's husband's fighting for you, David. That woman's husband's laying his life down for you while you laying down with her. Come on, somebody. His seasons have dramatically changed. Come on, bro. And he Great. commits adultery. And then he commits murder because one sin leads to another if we don't repent of it. Amen. Be sure, be sure your sin will find you out. And as time rocks on, time rocks on, Nathan the seer, which was a prophet in the Old Testament, came by and said, David, I have a parable to tell you. He says, go ahead. And he gives him this riddle. And he begins to talk about a lamb and how this man took this only man's little lamb that he had. And David was wroth and he rose up in anger. And he said, where is the man? I'll kill him. Nathan said, partner, it's you. David automatically hit his knees and he began to repent in sackcloth and ashes. Bathsheba, who he had to have one night time with, became pregnant and had a child or was going to have a child. And, and all of a sudden, God began to deal with David and told somebody to tell David, I'm going to take the baby. And the baby fell sick. And David fell sick because he knew he was the reason the baby was sick. Oh, it ain't it ain't springtime no more, is it, David? You're not dancing no more, is it, David? Your day, your, your, your dancing has went to weeping. Come on, he's mourning. He's got sackcloth. He's got ashes. He's not eating the king's meat. He's not wearing the king's apparel. And all the ladies and the concubines are worried about David, and they said David ain't gonna make it. And all of a sudden, the tragic news came to the concubines and to the ladies. And told him, said, the baby's dead. David's on his knees and he hears the ladies in the background whispering and talking. And he perceived within himself the thing that had taken place. Uh, turned around and asked the ladies, is the baby yet dead? And the lady said, there's no way that I can tell David. Because if I tell David, he's already half dead. He's already given up his blessings. He's about to starve and to sorrow himself to death. Can I tell you that seasons change? Come on, somebody. I'm going somewhere or another with this. I'm tying the story here. David's sorrowful. His season is a winter season. He's having a dark season. He can't feel the presence of the Lord no more. He's done something to God. He's broke God's heart. And he can't get in touch with heaven. I wonder if there's any anybody in this church today that's been trying to get in touch with heaven, but all you've got is a busy signal. No one will pay you attention. I'm talking to the choir. I'm talking to the choir. And all of a sudden, David turns around. The ladies finally told him, 
He said, yes, the baby's yet dead. Now watch this. The change of weather did not stop David from living. Oh, you pay attention to me. I see faces all around. I know there's kids in here, but pay attention to me. Amen. The word of God's more important than anything. Amen. And David is in a mess and he's finally getting a toll, but he did not let the weather he did not let the weather stop him from living. I'm trying to talk to somebody today that may be in a spiritual season in your life. And when we go through these seasons, some people won't even go outside because it's cold. I believe God is trying to tell us to take every moment and be thankful for every breath that you have. Every season that you in. Find you a jacket. Put you a jacket up. Don't you let the weather determine how you live. You see, the problem is most of the times that people are not prepared for the change of the weather. Sometimes the weather can change unexpected. The news forecast was talking about rain today, and now all of a sudden we got blue skies. And David rises up. And David, watch what David does. The winter time has not gotten better. There is not sunshine shining. There's coldness outside. It's gotten even went from dark to darker. David's baby's gone and David's to blame for. But I want to watch you. I want you to watch how David lives up to the name that God gave him. Names are very important in the Bible. I don't have time to go into that. But people just didn't name their babies Johnny for no reason. Or Billy or Bob or whatever that your name is. They didn't just pick it on the internet and say, oh, that's a cute name. It had meaning in the Hebrew and it had value to it. And the Bible said that God said that David was a man after his own heart. Amen. Now how can you be after God's heart sleeping with somebody else's wife? Oh, how, how, is, that, how is that a man after God? So God wouldn't do that. But you see, all of us by nature are sinners. Whether you want to confess it or not, you were born in iniquity. And, and, it, and it wasn't the righteousness that God saw in David that impressed him. It was the repentance. The impotent, uh, I can't even say that word right now, but the, the sorrowful of heart that David had when he done something wrong. You see, there's a group of people in the world, and it's called everyone, that has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there's only a group of people that are sorry for it. Who are those ones that are sorry for it? Those that quit. Those that stop. Those that are sorry and cry and have remorse over their sins. Some folks ain't sorry for their sins. But they're not prepared for the times of the season of change. But I like what the scripture says. The Bible says be instant in season and out of season. What does that mean? It means be ready at all times. The Bible says before we leave our house, we need to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What is that trick that Joker's got in his bag? Satan got a bag of tricks for you every day you walk out there. He's got fiery darts. He said, think it not strange, brethren, concerning the fiery trials which are to try you. Oh, isn't that bad news? I can never walk out of my house without the devil shooting darts at me. Oh, but I come to tell you good news. Every day you got a bag of wiles coming at you, but you also got a suitcase full of mercy that goes with you every day. His compassions are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Jesus said, oh, I'll be with you all the way even to the end of the world. And no weapon formed against you shall be able to. I feel an anointing in this place and God's moving this place, but there's just too many strikes and people just looking around. Amen. But I'm going to preach through the distraction because I know it's just a season of my life. Amen. I get frustrated sometimes when seasons don't go the way I want them to go. To a certain extent, I have no control over weather. Amen. I can't if I wake up and it's cold. There's no high, to a certain extent. And I want to tell you something today. Whenever, whenever David went through the season of his life, I want you to watch how he lived up to his name. The Bible said when they told him this awful news, that David rose up from the altar. Come on. He put on his royal apparel. He anointed himself. That means he took him a bath and he got him some cologne on, maybe a lotion up. He got to smelling good. How many like smell good when you come to church? Don't you lie? I mean, he likes his time. Come on, raise your hand, David's smelling good, man. 
And everybody's looking at David's life and they're prophesying within their own spirit saying, David, he's going to have a nervous breakdown. He's never going to be able to handle this sin that's in his life. Oh, but David remember the days of his youth whenever he used to pray before the Lord and the Spirit of God would move him. And he went back to the old paths. He began to seek the old days where he grew up. And he might have got cold and indifferent from the Lord. And the Bible said when he anointed himself, he went into the house of the Lord and he began to worship. I come to tell someone today, you've been worshiping, but you ain't been feeling none. You've been praying, but you ain't seen no results. You've been studying God's Word, but God's not opened up doors for you. I I come to tell you about the Spirit of the Lord today. God says operate in your own season. There's a season for you. And if you can't praise Him when it ain't your season, it might not never become your season. If you can't rejoice in those that's already in their season, you might not never get a season. Because if you can't weep with those who weep, and rejoice with those who... There's been many nights I stayed on my face with my Bible in my hand praying that God would use me in some type of I'm just like David. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of the wicked. I didn't care if I scrubbed the commode, cut the grass, weed. It didn't make me no difference as long as I was working for him. he done so much for me, Mr. Richard. It ought to be a shame for people to come to church and do nothing. Well, just now I'm giving you church. I don't know how I don't go off and up. I ain't got nothing to do around the church. They won't give me nothing. Quit letting folks give you stuff. If you serve the Lord, God will give it to you. Amen. I heard people tell me over and over and over, quit trying to go through doors on open. That ain't of God. Hogwash. They dream killers. They trying to kill your dreams. Ah, uh-uh, not in the closed door. Don't go through it. Why in the world would Jesus say keep knocking? You ain't got to knock on an open door. You got to knock on a closed door. I'm talking to somebody today. You've been knocking, you've been praying, but you ain't getting nobody to open up. I tell you, keep on knocking. Keep on worshiping. Keep on going to the house of the Lord. When everybody around you says you can't make it, when everybody around you says you're going to lose his mind, he's going to turn upside. Oh, yeah, I knew it wouldn't be long. He'd be back out in the street. I come to tell you, devil, I'm still here. I've been beaten up. I'm trying myself to see. But by the grace of God, I'm still here. I'm still here because I'm confident of this one thing. That he which has begun a good work in me, he will finish it. Oh, the devil tells me I'm too young. You're backslide, boy. You can't live for Jesus that long. I said the devil's a liar. That's what the word says. I don't, I don't try to live for God for 11 years. I live for God minute by minute, second by second, day by day. You don't get saved and stay saved 30 years overnight. Quit hating on people who've been saved longer than you have. They take it one day at a time, sweet Jesus. And just because I'm in a winter, don't laugh at me. Don't gather around and mock at me because preacher man's in a winter season. Because guess what? Your season's on the way. Amen. 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 But what got you where you act, keep doing it. Yeah. See, we don't like to adapt to change. <laughs> I used to have a biology teacher named John Egolf. He wasn't from around here. Obviously. Pretty cool though. I like Mr. Egon. But he didn't have much common sense. Book sense? Whew. He was a whiz. This is what he would say. It'd be frost outside. The skeeters would even be dead. And he'd be up there in his white t-shirt. It's not cold. It's not cold in the road. It's cold in my Manitoba. My brother. I don't know how y'all feel in Manitoba, but it's cold in my road for me. Okay? <laughs> You need to go put on your jacket. Some folks just dead set in their ways. They just gonna wear cold short sleeve shirt and cold weather. They make them different. And they ain't gonna change. Bless the Lord, I've worn this shirt since I was 18 years old. I'm gonna keep wearing it. The color about to wear out. 
about to wash the colors out of it. And, and I'm not, I'm not focusing upon a shirt. What I'm trying to say is some people don't like change. You go to try to change things in churches. People that went there 20 years. I don't know what that young preacher man not done that old road. All kind of stuff changed. I don't like it. I'm going back to the house. Break, bro. Break. But I love this statement right here. I love this statement. Watch this. This is, this is a good statement. To carry home in your Bible bag. If you do what you've always done, you can finish the rest. You're going to get what you've always got. But that's my heart's desire is to snatch them out of the fire, to tell them about Jesus, to let them know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth, I said, whosoever believeth, yellow, black, white, red, rich, poor, fat, ugly, skinny, bony, it don't make no difference. If God created you, you have a living soul inside of you that Jesus is madly in love with and said, I'll give my life that they might have life. Don't let the change of weather stop you from living. Job had a season of his life where one moment he was a perfect and upright man, feared God and shewed evil. He had plenty of, of cattle, plenty of, he had his wife, he had his kids, plenty of kids, plenty of money, plenty of finances. He woke up early in the morning, made sacrifice for his kids to pray for their sins because he didn't know if they had sinned and didn't ask forgiveness for himself. He loved his kids so much that he said, I'm not going to let them depend on their own. I'm going to pray for them. I wonder if there's any parents in here love their children so much that even if they won't pray their own self, you'll pray for them. You'll intercede for them. Come on. Because sometimes kids get on the wrong road. Amen? They make bad choices. You probably made them when you were young. I know I did. Amen. But they always got to be our children. We always got to love them. We always got to keep preaching to them. Because one day they'll wake up and respect that. One day they'll wake up and they'll love you for that. Not right now. Not right now. They're hard headed. They don't care what you got to say. But you cannot give in to what they want you to do just because you want to have their friendship. There will be a day where they'll be your friend when they've been to the hog pen and woke up and smelt the manure. Come on, somebody and said, I can't eat here no more. I'm going back to Mama's Fried Kitchen. Fried chicken and collard greens and cornbread. I can't eat with the hogs no long. And then you'll have the you'll have the joy of being the father who gets off his porch and runs afar off to meet them and embrace them. But right now they may be in the hog pen. They may be the prodigal child. But whatever you do, don't stop praying for your babies. God gave you those babies. You're steward of those babies, and those babies may not act like right, and you may have told them how to act. But one thing about it, if God's brought you on the other side, maybe Make sure you intercede for them that one day they might come to know the same. Jesus, do you feel what I feel in this house? And so Job's got it all going on. And all of a sudden, boom. There's spiritual powers. There's fight going on in high places and principalities. And he ain't got no control over it. Storm just begins to brew. And he's done. He has no shelter, tornado shelter. He can run to and get out of the way of the storm. Sometimes the storm will find you. You have to be prepared for those things. And Job loses it all, but I love Job's attitude. When he rose up and all of his friends had turned his back upon him and had betrayed him, Job rose up and he said, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Say that with me. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name. Oh, it's easy to say when you're in summertime. When your job just got a, a raise and your bills just got paid off and you're riding around in a new Cadillac. Like I see. See, you're going down the road, you ain't never danced before. It took a check to get you there. The Lord is. Oh, singing in the shower. Got the shower here as a microphone. About to drown yourself. The Lord could give it and the Lord take What's you so happy about? Happy about a check. Happy about some good news from the doctor. 
Happy about marriage. Happy about a new child. Happy about a new home. Happy about a vacation. But what about the winter time? The Spirit of the Lord, I believe, is saying today, I desire a people to worship me no matter what you're going through. To let me know that I'm God. I already know I'm God. I don't have to have no one to tell me. But it makes me feel good when we praise you. Come on, son. He said, he that praises me, I'll inhabit for you today. Cold season, it don't matter. I'm going around. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. About to lose your mind in the doctor's office. They put you on nerves here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They tell you you got heart problems, high blood pressure, sugar, diabetes, cancers. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. What's he over here praising? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you know that there are angels in heaven right now that never stop continually saying, I don't forget what that means, right? Lord God Almighty or something like that. But they're, they're constantly praising God. Lord God Almighty. They're praising God all the time. And the Bible says that when, when he comes back to, to get his children, that the church, the redeemed, are going to sing a song the angels can't sing. I don't know about y'all, but the angels got us to be bad right now. It's not always our favorite time of the year, is it? Spiritually. Sometimes we can feel so indifferent. Last point I want to make today. There's spring. There's summer. There's autumn. And then there's winter. We know it is fall. But there's one season that I found in the Bible that should make all of us feel better. And it's called this. I even tried to look it up in the dictionary. Dictionary don't even know how to find it. They just says it's a good time. <laughs> but there's one season that the Bible talks about. And it's, it's Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Listen to the season. And let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season. Oh, somebody got it. In due season. I don't know what season you're in right now. But if I understand this book correctly, it ain't going to last forever. If you're not putting yourself, now let me tell you something. I got to be quick. I want to tell you that you can make your own seasons. God is not a man that he should be mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you're sowing bad seeds, you're going to live in a bad season. Then it's your fault. And one of these days, mama ain't going to always be able to bail you out. Dad ain't going to have enough money to write to bed. Yeah, one day, you're going to pay your own duns. Mm, what would you to be like today if you knew about paying bills? You got a quiet man. <coughs> Due season. You're not going to stay in the season that you're at forever, regardless whether you're in a good season or bad season. But I'm, I'm led to feel like the Lord has laid this message upon my heart because there are some people in this church right now that has been in a winter season spiritually. And you feel so far away from God. And then there are others that are that are new to the Lord and, and, and they, they're on fire, man. They're, they're young and they're growing in Jesus Christ. And, and some of us older ones that haven't felt that growth in a long time, we get jealous. And we begin to say, man, I miss those days when I used to shout like that and feel that glory and felt good, told people about Jesus, I miss that. But let me tell you something. The Spirit of the Lord hasn't forgotten about you. I don't care how long you've been saved. If you'll cry out like David cried out and say, Create me, O God. O God, a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. But restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Church, if we live for Jesus long enough, we're going to go through some winter season where it feels like God don't love us. And he's millions of miles away. But God is telling you today in his word that that's a season. God, in the book of Genesis, when he created the heavens and the earth, he divided the light from the day and he set time seed and harvest and we call those seasons nowadays so besides griping about the coldness that you're walking through with the Lord be still know that he's God in winter just like he is in summer it's nothing impossible the Lord God just wants you to learn how to praise him cold or hot time spring or fall 
stopped up nose and all. Just put your hands together and say, God is good all the time and all the time. I must bring this thing to a head. I must nip it in the bud. Some folks is retired. Other folks got to work. They ain't know they ain't catch that one. I thought like my dad been telling me about a store. What's it called? You don't know. Yeah, you do. I'm just ashamed of it. They're talking about a TG and Y or L for somebody. What in the world is that? TG and Y. He said somebody used to be the Walmart years ago. I thought to myself, what generation? <laughs> hey man, that was a different season. Come on, y'all. I got to nip it in the bud. When we glean from the word of God today, I want you to walk out of here encouraged no matter what you're going through. If you've done everything you can to get out of your season and it won't leave, just keep persevering. I guarantee you. I stand on this. I believe this book. I die for this book if God give me strength. That's how much I believe God's word. And he says this, weeping endures for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You're going to cry, you're going to weep, but those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. That's what the book says. And you may be in a dark season, but I come to tell you that ain't your final place. Amen? Homecoming just this past year. I must tell this quick little story. We prayed for rain. We prayed for a good service. I mean, no, we prayed for the rain to go away. I'm sorry. We prayed for a good service, a spiritual service. And the night before service, the weatherman is speaking of flood. Rain, which percentage way up there. I'm so down. Hard no way I go to bed that night and Satan telling me you don't even wake up tomorrow praying. Because if you can't get God to answer you for a prayer of rain, they don't even pray about nothing else. He don't care about the rain. He don't care about what kind of season and weather you're going through. He don't care about nothing else. I come to tell you God takes care about your ingrown toenail. If it hurts you, it hurts him. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Brother Larry calls me the night before. He says, Brother, what you want to do tomorrow? I said, I don't know, man. I guess set the chairs up on the inside. We'll pick them back in the Sunday school classroom and let them eat back there. He says, All right, that's what you want to do. He said, We prayed now about the one going to rain. I said, Yeah, I know it, brother. I'm down. I'm, oh, ye a little faith. I don't know if you ever there, but I'm there a lot. Oh, ye a little faith. I know you don't want to have a pastor that's there a lot, but oh, ye a little faith. That's me sometimes. And, and I wake up the next morning and, 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 and I hear birds singing. Tweet, tweet, driving, driving. Tweet, tweet, tweet. I thought to myself, where the rain at? They said the rain was going to be here in the night time. And here it is. Tweet, tweet. Come on, Miss Brennan, help me sing. You know you like this song. You told me last time you did when I started singing. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden I wake up. Well, Larry called me, hey, brother. It ain't raining down here. I said, yeah. They speaking of it coming in before dinner, man. This is going to get the chairs. Little Wayne began to call, and they was going to help, and they put the chairs. And I got to the church, and these boys and these men are already out there working. I'm talking about children. They're all out there putting their hands to the plow. And, and, and they asked me once again, where do you want to put the chairs at? I said, ah, just, let's just put them on the inside in case it rain. Why come back out and rain? Brother Larry said, now, brother, you prayed that it was going to rain. He said, let's leave them outside, and if it rains, I'll come out here and put them inside. Yeah. I'm thinking, I said, I'm going to be preaching you. you preaching to me. I said, don't leave the chairs outside, then, Brother Larry. So they said, all oh, the tables about there the whole time the devil said, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain. 9, 30, 10 o'clock, whatever time we started service that day, came to Tweet. Come on, somebody. Birds still singing. Sunshine still out. God says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we had a whole church praying that it would rain. I want to tell you, it didn't even rain that evening. And when the service time comes, we had a Holy Ghost meeting up in here. We began to feel rain from heaven. He opened up the windows of heaven and poured us out spiritual rain. So now 
I know what the weather man was talking about when he said it was going to be a rain. Because Elijah's all up in his bundle praying for rain. And he's been in a drought season for too long. And he prays and he sends the little young boy out there. He said, go see what you see. Because praying people expects things. But sometimes our expectations get too high and they get let down and then we get angry with God. And he goes out there and he says, I don't see nothing, Elijah. He come back and he says, oh, I'm going to keep praying. Stand to your feet today. I'm going to keep praying.